Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell from the title below, I am going to be telling you guys three ways that I got over my depression and anxiety. So I filmed this video already but then I ended up deleting it because um, it was just so all over the place and I wasn't really getting the facts that I wanted in the video throughout the whole video if that makes any sense. And then plus, I told you guys a little backstory about what happened for me to actually go into my depression state and to my anxiety state, but then it took over too much of the video and the video was way too long. And then when I took it out of the video, the video made no sense because you guys would have been commenting and telling me like, what do you mean? What do you mean? So I'm doing this again. So get ready. So I will probably make a video of what happened for me to get into my depression and anxiety, but that will be a separate video because it will take too long. Um, so hopefully you guys will understand my points and understand my steps to get over anxiety and depression. So my first step was to get new friends. So the friends that I have right now are the friends that I got, like the, the new friends. I love them so, so, so much. Like, I love them to pieces. Oh my gosh, I love my friends. And I just want to remind you guys that it doesn't matter how many friends you have. It only matters about how good of a friend they are. You can have 50 friends and all of them treat you terribly. But then you can have five friends that all treat you amazingly. And I would rather the five friends, which is exactly what I have. I will say that I have about 10 main friends that I absolutely love and that I have acquaintances. So you also need to remember the difference between acquaintances and friends. The reason why I made new friends is because the event that occurred made me realize my true friends. Um, the event that occurred made my school talk about me a lot. Pretty much everybody was talking about me and they all had a different side of the story but really the only person that knows the true story is me and the people that were involved and even some of the people that were involved were spreading false information and that just made me so annoyed and so mad because people were going to them for the story but it wasn't the right story so during my time of need a lot of my friends just dropped me they stopped to be my friend and they didn't really care about my feelings. They just stopped talking to me because I had a bad reputation. And that is just disgusting because if this happened to them, I would have stayed by their side 100%. So the friends that I have right now, I made them... I didn't make them. I became friends with them um, just a little bit after I came back to school because I did get suspended. But... Like I said, I'm still friends with them right now. And the fact that they became my friends and they they liked me for who I am right after everybody was just talking about me and saying all these different things, that is just amazing. And I can never thank them enough for that. The second step is creating a support system. So when the event occurred, I didn't have a big support system. A lot of people didn't believe me, including my family, and the only people that I had to support me was my mom, my godmother, and the CYWs at school. So definitely I knew that I had my mom's support because she's my mom. Like, obviously I have her support, but then that wasn't good enough. And even the support of my godmother, that wasn't good enough either. And so when I went to school every day feeling depressed and like I didn't want to wake up and come to school, I absolutely hated it. Like I can't stress enough how much I hated coming to school. Um, and then the CYWs were there for me. They would call me out of class and be like, you know, are you okay? And talk to me, just do their job. But, you know, a lot of people don't like going to talk to the CYWs, but I don't know why because... Even though it's their job, they step out of the way to do things that their job doesn't require. They support you, they trust you, they 
they're just there for you and they're so com I'm so comfortable with them oh my gosh like I just love the CYWs especially Miss Murray I don't have a problem with Miss Brooks but me and Miss Murray or Miss Murray and I we just have a connection and I love her to pieces another supportive person that I had at school was one of my teachers um, she's not at my school anymore because she's on maternity leave, but hopefully she's coming back soon. I believe it's in April. I don't know. But she was awesome because um, during my depression time, I went back to school and a lot of teachers were also talking about me. Just It wasn't, it wasn't just students. And that just blew my mind because teachers talk so much. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, we don't talk. <laughs> no, we don't have time for that. We're mature adults. Well, obviously not because that's not what you did. Two little quick story times. One of my teachers, when I came back from suspension, I found out through my friend that was in my class that she was talking about me to my class, not just to, like, you know, a few students. She was talking about me. Sorry, I have to fix my hair. She was talking about me to my class, saying certain things. I'm not gonna going to repeat it. But then afterwards, I um, confronted her about it, and she's like, "Oh no, I didn't say that." But I know she did. Like I'm not stupid. And to this day, I still don't really like her that much. Like she's all right, but anyways. And then second little story time. This other teacher, um, he was talking about me to me not realizing he was talking about me so there's this thing at my school called multicultural night which is after school and it has all these different cultures there's dance and singing and spoken word and a bunch of different things so i've been in it every year since grade 9 and i'm in grade 12 now hopefully i'll be doing it again this year and so we usually practice after school in classrooms you can just walk into a random classroom with the doors open and just practice your dance and so my friends and I were practicing a dance in this random classroom and then the teacher came in he's like oh girls you can't be in here because there's no supervision and we're like Ugh, okay and so we walked out we didn't create a fight or argument we just walked out and we were okay with it and then he continued talking and he's like yeah you know something happened last year this was last year right He's like, this, something happened last year and these girls were doing this and da 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 and he was like going into description of what happened yet not realizing he was talking about me and he was talking down on those students and belittling them and it was just discussing the way he was talking about those students again not realizing it was me. So that made me very, very, very upset. And again, I just walked away. I wasn't going to start an argument. I'm just like, this guy's talking about me. <sighs> that still upsets me to this day because teachers love to talk. They really do. Don't get me wrong, though. I do have other teachers that they probably talk a little bit. Like, every teacher talks. Every person talks. Let's put it that way. Every person has something negative to say. But there are teachers in the school that supported me and fought for my case, if I can say that. I don't really want to go into details, but there were just a few teachers that were like, oh, had to say bad things about me and my friends. So again, create a supportive system. Because even though I had teachers talking about me, students talking about me, so pretty much everybody around me was talking about me, I had a few teachers that were there to support me and then I had my friends later on to support me as well. And so the last step, step number three, is to love yourself. This is one of the hardest steps that you can go through. This is just for anybody, not even just for myself, not just for people that have gone through depression or anxiety. This is just hard in general. You need to love yourself no matter what happens, no matter what shape, size you are, whatever skin tone you are, whatever language you speak, it doesn't matter. Remember to love yourself. I mean, I'm still working on it to this day and it's been two years and I'm still not 100% loving with myself, but I'm working on it and 
I know that at the end of the day, I do care for myself. I care for my health. I care for my body. I care for my mind. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. I can't sit here and tell you guys how to love yourself because it works in different ways and we all do it in different ways. Maybe your way is looking in the mirror and saying, you're beautiful, oh my gosh, eyebrows on fleek, like for real. I don't know, different ways. Maybe, you know, I don't know. And not just for myself, but for anybody else watching this video that has gone through depression, I believe the statistics are somebody with depression will relapse at least two times in their lifetime. And so you can never prep yourself for that, but I'm not ready. But if it does occur again, then at least I know that I have my friends, I have my supportive system, I have my mom, I have my godmother, and I just have the support and I have a different mentality now where if I do go back into my depression stage, then I will deal with it when it comes and I'm not wishing it on anybody else. I would never wish it on even my worst enemy. And I feel like I will probably get some negativity from this video. People will be saying, oh, um, you never had depression. Like, stop using words you don't know. Or you never had anxiety. Like, you have a YouTube channel and you're putting yourself out there, yet you have anxiety. Like, what? But it doesn't matter because I don't mask it, but I know how to deal with it. And I'm comfortable with myself in certain ways and I'm not comfortable in other ways. So if that makes any sense to you, give this a thumbs up. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I still do get anxious. I still wake up in the morning sometimes. It's like, mm, I don't want to go to school. I really don't. It's not because I'm tired. It's not because I just don't want to go to school. It's because people just love talking about me. Like, I feel like sometimes it's people's hobbies and what they love and enjoy in life is to talk about me because I'm so amazing, aren't I? Like, I'm so amazing. But it's okay. I don't care. I I'm just don't care anymore. And I love that mentality and I wish everybody could have that because I didn't before. When I, Two years ago when I was going through my depression and my anxiety, I didn't have that mentality. I was going crazy every morning like, oh my god, I don't want to go to school going crazy but now I'm like you know what if you want to talk about me go ahead if you want to have negative things to say about me go ahead because who hasn't had negative things about them being said it's a part of life and you need to learn how to deal with it so again my three steps of getting over depression and anxiety are making new friends creating a supportive system and loving yourself so hopefully these steps will help out anybody that's watching this video and I know I enjoyed it so hopefully you guys did so if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and give us a thumbs up you guys support me through my YouTube career it's not really career but I love the support that I'm getting so far and hopefully it'll continue so again, I love you guys all. Goodbye and thank you for watching my video.